regular track. Uh, we will have the, since uh, Dr. Livermore couldn't make it, as soon as uh, uh, George Corsair here gets through with his presentations, we'll make the award for best paper and uh, second best paper. Because of the support of the Metro Atlanta ISSA chapter, we are able to offer a uh, cash award for the first and second place paper in the full competition and the best student paper in the student papers competition. They cut back funding. Last year we gave out first and second in both, but they're running tight on money. So, okay. In theory, your presentation should be right here under my computer. Clap loud afterwards. I want to win the money. Yeah. <laughs> one, one of those two is, I, th I think yeah. that one may be yours. That's all it's like. Okay. Okay. Well, just take it away. You've got uh, 30 minutes, including uh, time for Q and A. Well, I'll be back to uh, flag you down toward the end. Now, this should work with the uh, okay. forward, slide forward and slide back because that's tied to that. Let me try it right now. Otherwise, we may get everything here. It may go into standby mode, so we may have to turn it back on. Okay. And yep, there it goes. Slide forward, slide back, and that's a laser pointer. Hello. Hi, everybody. My name is George Corser, Oakland University. Happy to be visiting here. It's a little humbling to be here. Uh, I, uh, this is my first conference, and uh, the people I've met here have blown me away. Um, so I hope I, I live up to what everybody else has done. I don't know that I can. Don't oh, worry. Uh, thank you. I, I, I won't, uh, <laughs> Where is Oakland University? It's in. It's uh, Oakland County, Michigan, which is by Birmingham, Michigan, by Detroit. It's um, uh, the city is up in Hills in Rochester, Michigan, is where the university is located. So it's going to be famous one of these days. <laughs> Starting today. You're going to do it's it. It's already is. It's becoming more famous already. Um, anyway, so my paper was entitled the "Tale of Two CTs: IP Packets Rejected by a Firewall," and uh, if you can imagine firewall and you have the the internet that's blowing you know, shooting bad packets to these people things you know malicious type of activity or otherwise bad activity and you have this firewall blocking it and you may have uh, you may log this uh, this traffic what I found uh, a friend of mine um, who happens to be the director of, of IT at a publicly traded company in Auburn Hills um, he let me take a log of one day of his activity. And I noticed that there was two distinct patterns. There was a spiky curve on some of the activity, and there was a flat curve on other activity. And I'll show you, I'll get into more of that as we go on. But basically, there were two patterns, or two, two curve tendencies, CTs. I kind of made that term up, but we had a steady flow from some IP addresses, and we had one-time gush or short bursts from other IP addresses. So I, I decided you know, to start the, the, the paper. They come in less at times. They come in bursts at times. A table of two CTs. Right now. <laughs> kind of literary. <laughs> <little bit there. laughs> Not a good one, but that's what I did. Anyway, so, so I think we're all familiar with firewalls. They can process hundreds of thousands of packets a second. Um, you can log everything. But it's usually ineff it's infeasible to do so because the space and the time required to slow your, you slow your firewall down it has to log everything. And it's going to be you know, space for him to keep track of all those logs. Plus, somebody's got to interpret those logs. Normally, you have to, you know, a human being's got to look and see what's going on in this, in this uh, firewall, what's being blocked. This is an example. Oops, wrong button. This is an example here of a log. If you haven't seen one before, this is a Cisco router. These are all Cisco error codes. And we'll get into those in a second there. But um, in a nutshell, uh, oh yeah, by the way, I anonymized, anonymized some of the addresses. So you'll see 0.0.0.0. .0 that means that was one of my, my, my colleagues' uh, real addresses. He didn't want them publicized. The data source again was this company, this uh, this corporation. The anonymized data. If you ever want to, to give a firewall log to your class, that they get this a live one, not a, not a theoretical one, not a simulated one, a real one. 
Go to that website right there. It's in the paper that's also on your CD. That link is in the first in the introduction of the paper. And go ahead and feel free to play with that data. The method, five steps. One, I want my parsed the, uh, the log file to obtain the source IP addresses and other information out of the log. Two, I created histograms of the data. I want to find out what this activity was. I want to see these curve tendencies, these patterns. And uh, I wanted to show the rejection activity in one hour time intervals, five minute time intervals, anything that would, that would, that would clarify that what was going on in the firewall log. Three, I wanted to plot the time intervals between the packets. A lot of the scholarly papers that we read will say, well, this, this, these packets come in at a Poisson distribution. You know, they want to show that it fits some kind of mathematical model, so they try to make these assumptions. Well, we plot the time intervals, we can see if that's really true or not. Four, I want to identify what source IP addresses are the ones that are most frequently rejected. Assumably, who's attacking this guy? And then five, I want to plot those uh, patterns of rejection over time by IP address. So that's my method. And probably the most valuable pedagogical point of this whole presentation is that you can visualize all this information using Microsoft Excel. As long as the file is not so huge that it won't fit into an Excel spreadsheet, could do all this analysis with an Excel spreadsheet. You don't have to get these fancy network analysis tools. My client does, or my client, he's my friend, he does have uh, these tools and he uses them in real time. But I thought this might be handy to show you using Excel because the file was small enough I didn't have to go into MATLAB. So let's, let's take a look at what we got here. This is the results of the, of the steps. Number one, parse the log file. Do I use Excel to parse it? Those are the commands. I'm not sure if the Excel file is on that uh, website that I gave you. Yes. Oh, well, is it? Okay, good. So you can you can cut and paste those commands. You're checking my website right now. Or maybe it's just the right here, buddy. Eyes right <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so what you'll see is 165,308 packets were rejected by this firewall in a 24-hour period. 33,260 unique IP addresses attacked this site, or at least were had packets that were rejected by the firewall. Put it that way. We don't know if they were attacks or not. This is an example of the parsed firewall. Obviously, we can't put the whole the whole parsed firewall there, but we have uh, this is the type of the type of error code this is. I mean, if you're looking over here. It's the, you know, this right here is the Cisco error code for a TCP port scan. And so that's just, this is the IP address that it came from. And this is the date and time stamp uh, in, in numerical form. I think on my spreadsheet, does it have it in date and time form? There, Jake, yes? No, not no, great, but you can add it there. Anyway, so that's what it looks like. Where's my next? Okay, now here's the histogram by the hour. Histogram just means I've taken all the information that happened in that particular slice of time. Based on just eyeballing it, it looks like it's a pretty even spread. He's getting attacked consistently throughout the day, no particular times any more than any other. The, 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 the uh, analysis took place from 10 o'clock in the morning on May 8th of this year. And then I, he cut the thing off at 11 o'clock uh, in the morning on May 9th. That was a Tuesday to a Wednesday. So now this isn't like the beginning of a 24-hour period. Midnight is right here. So this here is uh, 7 p.m., 5 p.m. So these two short lines here are not full hours. That's why they're short. Mm -hmm. Oops, wrong one. Now here's the same the same information divided in five minute increments. Just the same exact data, just sliced thinner. And what we have is, you're seeing this, this yellow line is the average for the entire uh, set. So he's getting hit about maybe 550 times every five minutes. But 
but certain, certain times there's these incredibly large spikes. As a matter of fact, it's a relatively spiky chart. You know, overall, it looks like the baseline is, is a little bit lower, but you're seeing these distinct spikes. They come in bursts at times. So I said, well, let's see if, these, if all this thing matches up with the scientists would say, right? This here, is, <coughs> this here is a logarithmic scale. So this is 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000. It goes up by 10 times each time it goes up one of these. And this is how many um, time intervals. Uh, what was the time interval? Sorry, what was the time interval between the last packet? So I'll take a packet and say, all right, when did the last packet hit? Well, that was, you know, a second ago. Okay, if it was, if it was a second ago, then it's going to get plotted up here. And a lot of them, 100,000 of them, were within a second of each other. But there were these other ones that, you know, were yeah, 12 seconds. And now, this is the part that really the mathematicians absolutely hate. These little outliers out here. That's not good. Because there's too many of them to ignore. It's not like one. So what happened there? Why is there so much activity out there? Why were this, the gaps so long there? Well, what I did is I plotted a line. This is, this is a perfect exponential curve right here, this yellow line. Perfect exponential curve. If you were going to do a linear interpolation, you could do a linear interpolation, but this is an exponential interpolation. It's the same as a linear interpolation, except for it's exponential. Now, this is the actual data. It doesn't fit. It doesn't fit the, the, the Poisson process that they talked about. That's an exponential uh, distribution between, between the intervals of these packets. We have what they call a generalized extreme value. I don't even know what that was before I started this study. But it means that the, the, the edges are more than the middle. There's more activity happening. It's like a coin toss. You know, you, it doesn't come up on the side. It comes up one or zero. Right? So you have more extreme information here. That's what we're seeing from this data from this guy's firewall log. Now, this is not Excel, but this is so cool that you guys have to get this. It's free, downloaded. I won't give the brand name because I know we're, we're, not, we're, we're neutral on the technology. It's called Input Analyzer. You give it a set of data, it tells you what the uh, distribution might be. That is cool, right? So I ran it through here and then I said, well, is it an exponential distribution? Well, the, the p-value that they call it is less than 0.01. No, nobody lets you get away with that. It is not an exponential distribution of this data. That's, we, have to dis, we have to disregard that. We have to, what do they call it, uh, reject the null hypothesis. I read too many of those. So, so it, it'll guess other distributions for you. It has a bunch of them inside of the tool. And mine is all free. You've got to get this. So it's called a Weibel distribution. What that is, I don't know. It's one of these generalized extreme value distributions is what it is. And that one, we can't reject the null hypothesis, but we're far from proven that, that, that this is the distribution. The point of it is that what, if you were to read a scholarly paper on a firewall log, and it says, we will assume that this is a Poisson distribution, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know what? You can't do that with this data. Not if you use all the data. You just have to throw away all the outliers then. I don't think you can do that. A lot of data to throw out. So anyway, so that's what we, that's what we came up with as far as the process that's going. We do have this distinct set of two patterns. Now, this is bizarre. I mean, if you guys think of, the, of why this might have happened, you practic practitioners might have an idea. Explain this. The, these are the most frequently rejected IP addresses. The most frequently rejected IP address of this whole set by far was the company's own internal server. Sure. You know why? It's either internal things, you know, insiders or misconfiguration, or the outside people also try to blend in, so they're going to use the same. <coughs> okay. 
good. Yeah, that's right. I, I've got to be. I mean, I don't know. I, I can't track them down because the, the, none. Some of the messages had none. There was no IP address, no source IP address in there. That makes it really a nasty thing. And then their own internal server was the next one that had an IP address. Uh, and then this this address here and this these addresses here. And now this the, what this table shows is. I'll go over this one here. Um, these are how many time intervals, how many five minute time intervals that the IP address appeared in. There were 291 total time intervals, total five minute time intervals in that particular set of data that I got. 291 of them. This particular one, it was rejected 1,659 times in 238 time intervals. What does that tell you? It was a steady attack. This, if it was a tech, boom, boom, boom. Every interval is giving something. It's trying something that's at a constant rate, chugging away. This next one down it was only in six time intervals, but it had almost as many attacks. So it just blam, blam, blam. It, it hit them, and then it hit them again, and then it hit them again. Do you know which firewall rules triggered these injections? Uh, yes. Okay. But the, the, the error codes that I gave it would tell exactly what the uh, rule was. Uh -huh. I mean, it might not, it, might, it, it tells why it was rejected. It might not say the precise rule in the, in the, in the, in the Cisco router, but I'll show you a graph of that. Definitely. Okay. I know, I know. I want to get to that point too. We're getting uh -huh. there. We're getting there. Cool. Um, yeah. Did you say that the, the non was the internal server? No, this one here, this anonymized one, is the internal server. Okay, but the, the line above that? None didn't have a source IP address on it. How can that be? They spoofed it. They spoofed it. Yeah, yeah well, how else did they get they, the they just They, they just sent a, sent a packet without any source IP address on it. Okay. Right. That's why I was wondering if you could get it back. If you, yeah, those, so are, those are spoofing attacks. I don't see how else they could get it. You've got to have a source IP address. They must yeah. have just manufactured that particular packet and sent it across to see what would have happened. Okay. How so else? Net Nmap and some other tools allow you to do that. So they're perfect. Oh, yeah, this, where do they get to the end? You're, you're on the right track, though. You're definitely, definitely on the right track. So, so here's what's going on here. This is just a just a graph of a couple of these curve tendencies that I was telling you about. And this is this one. I think is pretty clear cut. It only shot and hit it all in one time interval. And these were really, really even. These are a couple of ones I just graphed from the top of the top five or top six of these things. So it's not hard to see. There's two patterns, but why? Okay. <clears throat> now, this is a scatter plot. This is also is another way of visualizing it. And I think it's kind of cool to use Excel to visualize this stuff with, <laughs> because it's a nice little thing here. The, what this little crowd is, is, uh, is the number of, uh, these are <coughs> all the ones that were injected within one or two five minute intervals. Right, this little cluster right here. This is an example of that one that we saw at the, on the first chart that I showed you. So it's in only one or two, or I guess it's six intervals here, but it hit a large number of them. So this, each one of those points represents a source IP address. My, 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 my uh, friend's server's ID I didn't put in there, and the none I didn't put in there either. It's just the ones that we had. Us, had a, and then, out here are the ones where there was lots of time intervals that they were at. And this, and this, this here is how many times it attacked, it was rejected by, this, by the firewall. So that gives you a spread. You can kind of see visually, there's kind of a no man's land here between 25 and 50. There's another no man's land, say up to 85 or so. And then you get this wide spread here. But that's what we're looking at. Each one of those is, a, is an IP address. You can think of it as an enemy. Each one of those points is an enemy. Some of them are attacking a lot in only one interval. Some of them are attacking you, whether a lot or not, but over a long time. And these are just the addresses here. Now, here's an interesting little thing. I went through and I said, how many of these source IP addresses attacked once? There's 33,000 IP addresses. How many of these source IP addresses attacked twice? <coughs> or five? 4,000 of them attacked one time, or they were rejected one time. 20,000 of them were rejected two times. 
Why do you think that is? You don't, you don't have to blurt it out if you already know. But, but there's, this is not random data here. <laughs> Anybody that tells me this is random data, I don't, I'm sorry. There's something going on here. And then here, you see, you see how it's, the even number kind of, it kind of, it kind of has that wave. You see that? It tends to be attacked. You tend to be attacked twice, or an even number of times. That bothers me. You know, when I was looking at this, that bothers me. Why that can't be? Uh, you were asking uh, Jamie, right? Yeah. Where? What kind of attacks are these? What's going on? Four percent of them were flagged as DDoS attacks. You know, you're, you're getting hit too many times. Um, 3% of them are some other kind of a code. That, you know, I, I did a spreadsheet. You can see it on the internet on my website there. It tells it. Explains it. But basically, 93% of them are port scans. This guy is getting, he's getting scanned. Somebody wants in. And uh, so that's what's going on. Now, the, the, you guys probably hear of a zombie attack. Maybe you've heard, if you haven't heard of it, it's, Proper, I don't know, proper name, the name that the scholars use, they call it the idle scan. Anyway, it doesn't really matter what it is. A really common way of doing port scan is to do this effect where if you are an untrusted, an untrusted uh, entity, a, a pirate, a scan, you know, whatever you want to call it, and you want to find out if there's an open port, what you can do is you can enlist the help of another server that is trusted, another source that is trusted. So you attack, you, you basically, you send a Synac to the, uh, to a, it's called a zombie, but it's really not working for you, other than to give you a, a number. You send a Synac there, and, and the zombie says, what are you talking about? And it sends you a reset, right? And then you send a Synac to the, um, and, and it gives you an IP identifying number, an incremental number, one, two, three, four, five, million, whatever it is. Then you send a, a Syn, to the, um, oh, oh, this one's spoofed, by the way. This was a spoofed, uh, spoofed one. So the, this guy's going to send it back here. Anyway, so, so this guy sends a, a sin here with this one spoofed. And th so this person sends, assumedly, a, a reset back to this guy. This guy does not know that it's, that, that has happened. He assumes it. He, he thinks it's got to have happened, right? Because he sent this one, a sin, with this guy's IP address. Then this guy sends, again sends a synac and again gets a reset. But this time, this this increment here is uh, this number is incremented by two. So in other words, this this is x plus one, this is x plus two, and this is x. If that happens, this guy knows that port is open. <coughs> so how many times is that server getting uh, attacked here? Or how, how many how many uh, uh, times is this happening? Two. You get it, this guy's doing two. He's, he's doing an attack. See, this guy's sending him one, and this guy's sending him one. So these two are two rejections. From the same IP address, but one of them's real and one of them's spoofed. One of them's the real person trying it, a real server trying it. The other one's a guy saying it's that server, but it isn't really that. I could be wrong about this. I'm speculating, but I really think this is correct. Now, here's the question, too. Is if 93% of the activity is port scanning, why the two curve tendencies? Well, what happens? When, when you're searching for a, tr for a trusted server, let's suppose you have a, a somebody that you want to attack. You're, you're going to keep on trying different servers. What's going to happen? You're going to get uh, different IP addresses because you're spoofing different numbers. Once you find an open port though, now you've got to try to exploit that open port. So that's when you start machine gunning it. That's my, my guess anyway. Is that once, you, once a server is found, um, then they'll start trying changing tactics. And instead of just scanning around, they're going to go in. He might even go and harvest his decent IDs, harvest those, and say, okay, I'm just going to go after this one, go after this one, just pedal to the metal. And that's why we're getting mostly these even things, but then these spikes from time to time. 
I, I did an update to the computer science and engineering department's website last year. Um, and I, had, I put my own email on a test page. Uh, as, you know, it had, a, it had a, uh, an info at type of email address, but it was actually my personal email address. And all of a sudden, one day, I started getting, you can't really read this here, but these are, for, are uh, 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 SQL injections. They're just SQL injection commands. Um, you know, it's got parentheses and select this, and it looks like they're trying to do MySQL database things. And uh, the point of it is, all this stuff came in within one minute of, it, of, of itself. So I was personally attacked, not really, they didn't know it was me, but this is what happened to my own personal experience in a different project. Point is that they, they went after it very fast. So, this, this data is just one company on one day, very limited results. I'm not making this claim that's true for everybody, but it, it seems to me that it would be a good idea for anyone who's wondering what's going on with their firewall. I mean, my own, my friend said, why the heck is my own, my own server attacking me? What the hell is going on? Why are we rejecting packets from my own server? Because the, the, the rules have been set up to, to expect that, and it, it's doing the correct thing. So that's one thing, is that those two curve tendencies. The other one is, uh, if you have students that, want, that, that, that don't have the money or time to get all these fancy tools, use Excel. Excel works pretty good to get decent graphs that way. So, conclusion, there are these two curve tendencies, at least in this case. You can visualize it in Excel if the data not, set's not too huge. And, uh, and idle scans may be the culprit in this case. Now, just to close, Identifying these two distinct patterns may be a far, far better thing to do than we have ever done. Blocking idle scans may be a far, far secure defense than we have ever known. That's out of the book. Thanks, guys. I'm pleased to acknowledge that this paper was recognized uh, by the reviewers of the proceedings as the runner-up for the yeah. Best Paper Award. <laughs> it's a little it's mine. There's your uh, your certificate and your uh, your fifty dollar gift card. He's really excited about it. <laughs> exactly. Really excited. We do another one. Thank you. Somebody blinked. So, I'm sorry. <laughs> Camera told me. This stuff will go to Target. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. Congratulations. Thank you. Good job. Okay, now we're going to roll straight into the best student paper competition. And one of the members was confused, but we won't go into that. Uh, all right, so we will bring up uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Rebecca to be followed by guess who? George again. So if you want to come up here and load your presentation, that will give you at least a, a break between.